Hey guys, it's Jessica and I am going to share a quick video with you today on how to make a cool background with a stencil and some distress markers and this little marker spritzer from Tim Holtz or Ranger. Um, it's part of the distress line and it is amazing. I love this thing. I've used it for a bunch of different things. Um, and I actually got a couple requests after sharing a card this past week um, asking how I made the background. So I figured I would make a video and share that with you guys. Um, so what I have here is a stencil from Craft and Desert Divas. It is from their new uh, release in October. This st stencil is called Snowflake Flurries, and I have used it a million times. You can see it's already really well worn and dirty, um, but that's okay. It still works just the same. So I picked out a few distress markers that I had on hand. Um, any marker pretty much will fit in this little thing. You can actually take out the little center piece and use bigger markers. I've used my um, Spectrum Aquas. I think you can use Copic markers, but I, I don't know if I've tried them or not. Um, but I think they're smaller than the Spectrum Aquas anyway, so they should fit. But basically what you do is you slide this marker in here so that the tip is in front of the little spray nozzle area, and you tighten that little screw so that it holds the marker in place. You don't want to over tighten it because it will ruin the tip of your marker, um, but you want it to just be right there so that the air is blowing through the tip of your marker. Um, so you, then you just squeeze the little handle or grip thing up there and it kind of works like airbrush. Um, it's just done by hand instead of having a system for it. Um, so I just went one by one with all of my colors and I used different colors um, for this one than I did for the original one that I made and shared that people had asked about, but the principle is the same. You just pick the colors that you want or that you have, um, you spray them in whatever pattern looks good to you. Um, I kind of make sure that the colors touch or overlap so that you don't have a bunch of white space in between the colors. Um, but you will notice at the end that my design does have white space on my um, four and a quarter by five and a half uh, cardstock piece, and that's okay. For me, I like that. I like that it looks a little more distressed and not perfect um, because, I don't know, it just looks nice to me. Um, but if you wanted to go for a more clean and crisp look, you can do that too. You just need to add more color um, and then uh, make sure that all of your colors blend together and touch in the area that you're going to put your card stack cardstock down on. Um, so as you can see, I'm just going through with all of my colors and squeezing that little tool to get my color onto the stencil. Now the nice thing about the uh, Distress line is that they activate with water. So even if it takes you a little bit of time to get going with your project, when you spritz it, they kind of come back to life um, and they do activate when you add the water. Uh, so I pulled out more colors than I actually ended up using. I didn't use that blue or black over on the left there um, because I just thought it was going to be too busy and I, I don't know, I wanted it to stay bright and not get weighed down in the darkness of the blue and the black. Um, so I just called it good and I didn't end up using those. Um, now I've got all my stuff done and sprayed on there. Uh, what I do next is I just grab a little spray bottle. It's a mister from Ranger, but you can use anything. You can use like the little hair bottle spray things that you use for fixing your hair, um, anything you have. Um, I just sprayed it on there and I was pretty generous with the amount of water that I used. I wanted really vibrant colors um, and that is good when you have a lot of water. Um, okay, so um, it kind of varies depending on how much ink you put down and how much water and kind of like how they blend, but um, you know, it just play around with it and see what works for you. <laughs> um, but then there's no rhyme or reason. I just flopped my paper right down on top of it and called it good. It does warp your paper a little bit because there is that water there. So depending on the type of paper you're using, um, you know, you might want to be careful about that. Um, but I went ahead and used a second piece on there as well. Now this one's not going to be as covered, obviously, because I've used up a lot of the ink from the first one. Um, but it gave me something. And I think some of these backgrounds that I've made are my favorites. The ones that are not really anything. They're just kind of like random. It gives that mixed media type feel to it. Um, and it just 
I don't know. I like it. I like the way that it turns out and that it's not something that you could buy. There's no paper that looks like that. And it's just cool knowing that, you know, that background you made is something that no one else can have. Um, obviously this makes a huge mess. <laughs> so be prepared for that. I'm using a craft mat. Um, and then I just use some water and like baby wipes, uh, paper towels, things like that to clean it up. Um, I did go ahead and just put another piece of cardstock into the mess that I hadn't cleaned up yet to absorb some of that ink. Um, again, I just like this. I like the way it looks. I like the splotchiness of it. And I think these are really fun to use for sentiment word cutouts, um, the dyes you might have, because then you get that really cool paint splattered effect. Um, and it's something that you don't have to do. Um, a whole lot of work for because it's just your extras. Uh, so I took my heat tool and I went ahead and dried my cardstock. It did uh, it did warp a little bit, but that's okay. I just turned it over and heated the other side to kind of get it to warp back the other way and be mostly flat. Um, but you can see how vibrant those colors look. Um, they blended really nicely together, um, and then you get that crisp white space. Um, and like I said, I prefer that distressed look where it's not a complete pattern. But if you want a more crisp and pretty finished product, then you can just add more color to your stencil um, before you uh, spritz your water. Um, but that's it. Easy peasy. That is the technique for today. If you have questions, be sure to leave me a comment down below um, and hopefully I will see you again in the future. Thanks so much and have a great day.